All right, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And, uh, you know, we've, we've shown uh, many of the aspects of this whole homestead cow deal. And, you know, uh, what it comes down to basically is you have a homestead, you're, you're growing a garden, you're doing this, you're doing that. And, uh, but maybe you'd like to milk a cow, right? So this, all right, live video, great. And so I've kind of walked through this process as far as the area where we milk and what we use to milk and acquiring a cow and all of this stuff, gone through a lot of the nomenclature about uh, what this is about, you know, what a cow is actually, um, what they eat and all that stuff. And I've shown you my area that I set up. I have this nice little stanchion that she'll stand in. We're just on a dirt floor here that periodically I can rake up and put down some new straw. And then that straw will go in there, um, mixed with the manure and the urine. And then periodically I can dig that out and make compost out of that net. So the whole thing is like a cycle and I have water up here for them. I've staged all of the materials that I need to do this and some of my fencing materials. This is my temporary fencing that I use in the summertime when I want to put them out on areas where I can't mow, I can't make hay off of like ditch rows and stuff like that. And really good grass in there and it turns into really nice milk. But what I wanted to show here was the, the training that goes into this. And training cows isn't like you'd think. It's just repetition and they know what's coming and they're totally motivated by their stomachs. That's it. If they can get something, they want it. Okay, so the one that I want to milk is that one right in the middle, that's Rose. So when I open this, she has day after day gone through here and gone right over to her stanchion and put her head through like that. Now I've got a function on here I'm going to try where I can turn this around. Here it is. Okay, I've turned it around so you don't have to see me. And there, she put her head through there. And she's got this little trough right here that she's getting her grain and a loaf of very nice bread. And she's just as happy as she can be. And then I come right here and I pull out this pin and then I move this to the side and it kind of reminds her that she's locked in. And I mean, she's a powerful, powerful animal. She could rip that thing out if she wants to, but we're working kind of a, a partnership here. She's getting what she wants and then I get what I want. And then usually what I do is I'll push her over to the wall you can see that she's made kind of a hole there with her front feet and she stands in that. And that happens really quick for some reason. She'll only be in this stanchion uh, maximum 15 minutes. You know, it's, it's relatively quick. Um, you can hear the compressor going. That's the compressor mounted right there. And then this is the surge milker. Hey, this is really neat. I can get a good picture on this stuff and I'm not in it. That's great. That thing on top is the pulsator and that's what simulates the action, the sucking action of the calf. All right, and I'm going to adjust it and that's about the cadence that you want right there. And you may be wondering, well, why do I have that running if it's not on the cow? Well, it's pretty cold out this morning and I keep this stuff stored in the butcher shop 
And like I've told you, the first my my routine is I come out and I get a fire going in the butcher shop, get it warmed up. And it's it's so cold out now, and it's going to be colder this weekend that I'm actually running a little heater in there just to keep the pipes from freezing, just to be on the safe side. You know, I don't think it would because I ran the fire all day yesterday. I heated a bunch of water, and uh, I yeah, I don't think that I was going to have a problem, but. So I get the fire going, and then all this equipment is get is warmed up. And when I bring it out here, I fire it up and just let it run. And it's almost like the dinner bell for her and her friends here to come in and get ready to be milked. All right, now these are steers, so they don't get milked. And they're going to be with us for a whole nother summer and they look pretty big right now this is a different subject but they look pretty big but they're going to be with us for another summer and then they will meet their their fate um, this is my other cow this is fawn and she's not freshened right now she needs to be bred so she's a maiden in waiting but anyway, I thought I'd show this and uh, show you how well the training has progressed. So now, um, as soon as Rose hears this start clicking, she's waiting at the gate for me, where before I used to have to go out and actually put a halter on her and sometimes uh, bring her up. Okay, there's me again. I'd have to bring her up kind of forcefully. Um, now, she's a six-year-old cow. I didn't have her since she was a calf. I just got her this summer. So this is one of the places you can get on the, uh, the raw milk um, express here, right? And uh, like I was telling you, and I, I feel motivated to tell you at this time, I have a customer who has a son that has some uh, conditions and raw milk has helped him a lot. So she's not exactly a customer, she's a friend because you all know that you can't sell raw milk, right? But we share it with her and she shares stuff with us, so. Okay, it's Mark Baker Screen Acres. Press on this weekend, remember anyone can farm.